No, you've shaved up. Look very clean. Bhagavad Dharma. You've shaved up from last week, huh? Last week you had a big yes, you had a big beard. Yes, Guru Maharaj, now I see. What is it? Once a month? Oh, not like this. <laughs> okay. Yes, Should I begin or we wait? Uh, we are doing the translator, not your Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Radhika Mataji, translator, Radhika. How are you, Guru Maharaj? Yeah, what's going on? How is everything there? Yeah. Good Maharaj, but the uh, virus was not so good. Who? Coronavirus. Oh, really? More cases? Yes. We still have we a lot. Still have a lockdown there. Mini lockdown. Mini lockdown. Huh? Okay. So many people came back to Burma, huh? Many of the devotees also came back? I think devotees not yet back. They're all still there in Thailand. Yeah, still there. They're waiting. Yeah, they are happy there. They're no waiting. Devotee on back. Some, de some devotee came back. Yeah. Yeah. Brihad Banu came back. Who's? Brihad Banu. Yes, yes. Brihad Banu came back. Some devotees in Kalak, they got the job on construction site. Oh, okay, very good. 500 baht a day. Very good. 15,000 per month. Yeah, can maintain. They're happy. They just want to maintain. At this time, cannot do anything. So if they can maintain, they're very happy. Yeah. Okay, Guru Madhu, now we can start. They are already here. Their translators are here? Yes, Guru Madhu. Okay. Umma Gyanat Marandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadam Ayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandiham Shri Gura Shri Yatapada Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishaka Nitumstya Hi Krishna Karana Sindhu Dhinna Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanustate Devi Pranamami Hari Priye 
Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Precharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Desatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare Vanchakaupatarubhyasya kripa sindhu bhai vacha patita nam pavane vyo vaishnavivyo namo namaha. So very happy to have the association of the devotees in Myanmar at this time. So we're one week away from the auspicious, the, the beginning of the auspicious month of Kartik. So we hope you're all getting ready to do some very serious devotional activities for the holy month of Kartik. The month of Kartik is very dear to Srimati Radharani. So if we can do nice devotion in the month of Kartik, Srimati Radharani will be very pleased with us. And if we can please Srimati Radharani, then she can present us, to introduce us to Lord Krishna. Radharani will introduce us to Lord Krishna. And, and if we come with Radharani's recommendation, then certainly Lord Krishna will accept us. So we're continuing to speak from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 9, Prahlad Maharaj offering prayers to Lord Nishringadev. Text, uh, we'll begin from text number 11. We heard how Lord Nishringadev had placed his divine hand on the head of Prahlad. Uh, Maharaj, I don't know, but uh, I'm not hearing properly. Should I log out and log in again? My internet connection is not so good, I think. It would give me like two minutes, Maharaj. Is this okay for you, Maharaj? Yeah, okay. Go ahead. This is two minutes, Maharaj. I'm not hearing properly.
I think her two minutes is up. <laughs> okay, just just in time. Very good. So is it clearer now? Yes, Maharaj, it's clear now. Okay, good. So uh, we were hearing how Lord Nisringadev, by the touch of his lotus hand on the head of Prahlad, inspired Prahlad to offer prayers. And Prahlad Maharaj was describing that one may be a very good brahmana with all the brahminical qualities, but he may not be a devotee. Oh, yeah! <laughs> what are we going to do? Uh, Maharaj, just a minute, just a minute, Maharaj, just a minute. Uh, I will call Bhagavad Gita. You are very important. You need to hear clearly. Hare Krishna? Hare Krishna, yes? yes. Can you hear me okay? Yes, Maharaj. I can hear you now. All right. So, Prahlad Maharaj is glorifying the importance of devotional service based on hearing and chanting. Prahlad Maharaj, let's say, um, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, am I audible? Yes. You don't know what's happening here today? Well, I can hear you. Okay, Maharaj. Sorry, Maharaj, so much disturbance today. Can we continue? Can we continue? Yes, Maharaj, we can continue. So the Supreme Lord is fully satisfied in him. He doesn't need anything from us. We read about great souls who are fully satisfied in themselves. They are described as Atma-Rama. Hare 
What? Nimai, Nimai, you will translate. Nimai will translate? Okay. So I'm explaining that the Supreme Lord is Atmarama and the great devotees are also Atmarama. They're fully satisfied, they don't need anything. So, the Lord is not in need of our offerings. He has many goddesses of fortune all serving Him in the spiritual world. So, we may think we're doing wonderful service by offering to Him, but actually he, the Lord doesn't need our offering. He's not hungry. He's not going hungry. We perform the offering for our benefit, not just for the benefit of the Lord, but for our own benefit, for our purification. We want to purify our own consciousness because we are thinking ourselves to be the enjoyer. We want to put ourselves in the mood of being the servant. In Chaitanya Charitamrita it is described, Ekala Ishwara Krishna or Sabritya. There is only one controller, all others are his servants. Chaitanya Charitamrita but we are conditioned souls, we are in ignorance and we are thinking we are the controller. To get us out of that ignorance, we have to engage in offering our service to the Lord. I remember when I first went to the temple in London, in England. I went to the temple and the devotee said to me, he said, Oh, he said, we're cleaning the temple today. So he said to me, can you help? Can you help clean the temple? And then he told me, he said, you know, cleaning the temple will clean the heart. So the same way, when we chant the holy name of Krishna, when we chant the Lord's name, then we also clean the heart. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has told us in Shikshastikam about cleaning the heart. 
चैतन्य महाप्रभु ने शिक्षा अष्टकम में यही बताऊदे Our heart is like a mirror, and in that mirror, there's so many so many images. We have images from the past, also not only present but the past also is there in the mirror. Just like a mirror becomes covered with dust, so we have to clean the mirror. All the dirt in the heart accumulated for many lifetimes is it can all be removed by the Sankirtan movement, by the chanting of the holy name. In other ages, there were other processes to clean the heart. People could do meditation, people could do great yagya sacrifices, people could do temple worship. But in Kali Yuga, there's only the chanting of the holy name. So Lord Chaitanya quoted for us the scripture, the Kali Santara Upanishad, which says, No other way, no other way, no other way, only by chanting the holy name. Because Kali Yuga, we're, ve we're not very intelligent, we're not very austere, we're not very pure. We don't have any good qualities because we're Kali Yuga people. We're very fallen. We want to take advantage of the holy name because the holy name is the only hope in this Kali Yuga to help us to get out, to get free from the miseries of this material world. So Prahlad Maharaj is beginning his prayers to Lord Nishringadev by explaining that he knows Lord Nishringadev doesn't need anything from him. And Prahlad also knows that he's not got a good birth. He was born in an atheistic, demoniac family. Of course, they were Brahman because their father was Haranyakashipu and Haranyakashipu was, his father was Kashyap and Kashyap's a Brahman, Prajapati. But Prahlad said, I'm born in a demon family. But he said, still I can offer prayers to the Lord. Even though I don't have a good birth, I'm still able to offer prayers to glorify the Lord. 
अपनी प्रहलाद महाराज बनुन जा तेरी वो भाई बनी महिले भगवान को स्तुति करना सौदे चु स्तुति करना उन जा मौ निचा कुल में जन्मे बनी भगवान को स्तुति करना पाऊं देश and Prahlad knows that by offering prayers to the Lord and by hearing about the glories of the Lord, then people in this material world can be purified. So we should understand from this that the birth is not very important. You don't have to be born in a high class family, you don't have to be rich, you don't have to be beautiful. Gachendra the elephant was a great devotee. Gachendra. <laughs> and Kolaveka Sridhar was very poor. Lord Chaitanya had devotees from all different levels of society. There were there was people like Maharaj Prataparudra, the king of Utkal, and there was Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, the head priest of Jagannath Puri. And in Mayapur, there were devotees like Srivas Pandit and his brothers, and there was Gadarhar Pandit, and there was also uh, Nilambar Brahmachari. People from all different levels of society, they all came to take shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Of course, Lord Chaitanya himself was born in a Brahmana family. But we see some of the followers after Lord Chaitanya, there was people like Naratam Das. Naratam Das was not from a Brahmana family. But he would initiate Brahmins as his disciple. And uh, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he was, and Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and our own Bhaktivinanta Swami Prabhupada, they're not from Brahmana families. So, birth in a Brahmana family, it may be an advantage, but it's not necessary. What's important is our devotion. If we don't have any devotion, then what's the good of being a Brahmin? If we don't have any devotion, then it's used, just to be a Brahmin by birth is useless. 
ब्राह्मण में जन्मे एकदम बेकार हो The Krishna has to be approached only by devotion. That is the important qualification. So Prahlad Maharaj is praying to Lord Nishingadev without considering his material position. But Prahlad Maharaj also understands that there are great demigods like Lord Brahma who are also servants of Lord Nishringa Dev. And Prahlad knows he's not equal to these great demigods. So Prahlad Maharaj is appreciating how Lord Nasringadev appears in such a, a, a frightening form, a form which puts everyone, full, fills them with fear. Srimad Bhagavatam describes that when Lord Nasringadev appeared, even Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, she could not recognize the Lord. She'd never seen the Lord in this form. But the Lord had to take that form in order to keep all the boons which Lord Brahma had given to Harani Kashipu. Right. Lord Brahma had promised Haranyakashipu, you will not be killed by any man or any animal. So the Lord comes half man, half animal. And Lord Brahma promised Taranyakashipu, you will not be killed by any weapon. So he was killed by the nails of the Lord. So Lord Nishringadev had to come in this special, very special form, which the demigods in even Lakshmi had not seen before. We can just imagine the lion. Lions are very frightening, very fearful. You hear them roar. Even elephants will tremble in fear when they hear the roar of the lion. But Prahlad Maharaj says that you've come in this form, he said, this is just your pastime, this is your own Leela. Yeah, you're coming in this form for your own pleasure. Not it, it. It wasn't. It. It was a little frightening for the devotees, but it was 
you know, Lord Nishingadev, it was his pleasure to come in this form. And of course, the, when the Lord comes in this world, his purpose is to protect his devotees and to get rid of these demons. So these demons who are killed by the Lord, they're, they're not, they're unfortunate souls. The devotees are the, the, the fortunate souls and the demons, they are unlucky, unfortunate, because they cannot understand the nature of the Lord. So Lord Nishringadev taking this form, he didn't, he didn't, his purpose was not to frighten the devotees, but because the devotees are a bit, we're, we're a bit simple, we, we, we were, be, we, and because we'd never seen that form before, so we were fright, they were all frightened to see Lord Nishringadev, and then he's in an angry mood, he's very angry, so this frightened the devotees even more, the devotees became fearful of him. But Prahlad Maharaj, he's not afraid of Lord Nishingadev. He understands what's, that this is the Lord. He, under, he, he's not, he can see the Lord in front of him and, he, and he's surrendering to the Lord. So the, all, the, all the demigods, they tried to pacify Lord Nishingadev, but it didn't work. So they want Prahlad Maharaj to pacify Lord Nishingadev. So Prahlad comes in front of Lord Nishringadev and, and he asks him, he said, now that my father is already dead, now that you've killed my father, you don't need to be angry anymore. There's no reason to be so angry. You can be calm now. Be peaceful. Just like Arjuna on the battlefield at Kurukshetra, he's telling Krishna, bring my chariot into the middle of the battlefield. I want to see everybody here. <laughs> so the Lord becomes the servant of his devotees. So we see Lord Nishringadev taking the getting some instruction from Prahlad. Prahlad's only the boy, but he's saying Lord Nishringadev, don't be angry. Stop. You don't have to be so angry now. You've already killed my father. Calm down. Huh? 
कि अब क्रोध करने जरूरी छह अब रिशाने पर्देन तैयले मेरे पिताजी मरी सकू अब क्रोधित नसरी ना वहाँ भक्त को वचन लिदे Prahlad Maharaj is just a young boy but he's so wise he's so enlightened and he has such an intimate he's able to have such an intimate relationship with Lord Narsingh Dev. Prahlad Maharaj jo ekdam shyano balak hunu huncha herda ra pani wa ekdam prakash wan ekdam ke hunu huncha bhanda keri shuddha bhakta hunu huncha jo wa lai wa ko jo bhagwan sita sambandha cha. Lord Narsingadev develops this vatsalya ras through Prahlad Maharaj. He develops the mood of being like the father to Prahlad. Ra Narsinga Bhagwan Narsinga Bhagwan le jo Prahlad Maharaj sita jo vatsalya ko udaya karnu bho wa ko vatsalya badera aayo jasto aapno pita jastai pita putra ko jasto sambandha vatsalya bhav badera aayo. We see all the incarnations before Lord Narsingh Dev. There was no family. There was only, you know, before Lord Narsingh Dev, there was Varaha, there was Kurma, there was Matsya, there there was Vamana Dev. We never we never saw the Lord being in the family life. जति पनि भगवानको अवतार भए थिए नरसिंह भगवान भन्दा अगाडि जति पनि भगवानको अवतार थिए हामीले देख्न सकिन्छ कि भगवानका परिवार थिएनन् भगवानका माता-पिता थिएनन् उहाँ एक्लै एक्लै आउनु भएको थियो जस्तो बरहा अवतार भयो थियो कुर्म अवतार भयो थियो मच्छी अवतार भयो थियो सबै भगवानको के छ भन्दा एक्लै एक्लै अवतार थियो उहाँका परिवार थिएनन् बट आफ्टर प्रलाद because prahlad becomes like the, the child of or the, the son of lord narsingh dev lord narsingh dev developed that mood that he thought oh this is so nice having my son being a father and after we see in the future incarnations the lord comes and he's like lord rama and lord krishna and he's enjoying the family life tesari ne jab महाराज to be calm he tells him he said just like when a snake or a scorpion is killed then all the saintly people they're happy they think oh very good ra prahlad maharaj jo bhagwan ko lagi euta udharan pani bhannu bhayo ki ki agadi wa ko lagi euta maksad pani bhayo bhagwan ko lagi tesari aune र जसरी साँपले डसेर भिक्षुले डसेर मरे पनि त्यो मृत्यु मात्रैमा केही पनि अन्तर छैन सो दे सेड इन प्रलाद महाराज सेड इन द सेम वे वी आर ऑल वेरी सटिस्फाइड नाउ दैट यू हैव किल्ड दिस डीमन माय फादर र प्रलाद महाराज भन्नुहुन्छ अब हामी सबै सन्तुष्ट भयौं तपाईले यो राक्षसलाई मेरो पितालाई मार्नु भयो because my father he was just like a big snake he was worse than a snake snakes can be co- controlled by mantra but there was no mantra to control my father ra prahlad maharaj bhannuncha tikhe mero pita jo euta thulo saap khatarnak saap jasto thyo koi saap lai ta mantra dekhin basna garna sakinchha tara mero baba la ta tai pani sakine thena So Prahlad Maharaj is congratulating Lord Narsingh Dev that we the whole world is happy now because you have relieved the the earth of this burden of this demonic person my father Ra Prahlad 
महाराज ने भगवान बधाई दीदे कि जस्तु अरु अरु देवी देवता दिशा ने बधाई दीदे कि तैंटा असुर मन भाव मेरे पिताजू एकदम बड़ा खतरनाक असुर थे ये असुर द्वारा पृथ्वी लुटकारा दिलाऊ सब पीड़ित थे And Prahlad Maharaj also said, "We will be able to remember and chant about this wonderful incarnation. We will be able to tell all of our descendants about how the Lord came, about how you came in this wonderful form. So it's very wonderful that you have come like this." <laughs> So hearing Prahlad give the example about how Sadhu is happy when we kill something, that may be surprising to people because they think, oh, we should be non-violent, we shouldn't kill anything. And we know in Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna also was reluctant to fight in the battle. He thought violence is not good. It's better not to fight. We should just be non-violent. We shouldn't fight. But Krishna did not agree. Krishna wanted Arjuna to fight. So there is proper use of violence, and that proper use of violence is according to the plan of the Lord. So Lord Nishringa Dev appeared. You are muted. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. You are mute. Yeah. Okay. Hare Krishna. Okay. So Lord Nishringa Dev appeared to kill Haranyakashipu. Because Haranyakashipu was so sinful. He tried to kill Prahlad, who was a saintly devotee. Hari Bol. Hirani Kas, Hari Krishna, Hirani Kasi ko jo ek dam paapi the, bolle Prahlad Maharaj la marne ani ko prayas gare ko the. Prahlad is the saintly son of Hirani Kasi Pu, but the father is such a demon. That he wants to kill his own son simply because he's a devotee. Sometimes being a devotee is difficult. We know, Lord Jesus. Hari Krishna, can you hear me? Hari Krishna. Yes, yes, Maharaj. Is it okay? Hari Krishna, yes, Maharaj. Okay. So, being a devotee yes. can be very difficult. Just like Lord Jesus, he got crucified, and Hari Das Thakur, he got beaten in twenty-two marketplaces. So being a devotee sometimes can be very difficult. 
you may have to, you may be, your, our devotion to the Lord may be tested, we may be put into difficulties and we have to surrender to Krishna. But whenever we're in danger, we can always remember Lord Nasringadev and how Lord Nasringadev comes to protect the devotee. Of course, the devotee wants to give service to Krishna, not to take service. We, we hear about the one devotee who was a, he, he was a, the leper, Vasudev. His body was filled with worms eating his flesh. He was very diseased with leprosy. But Lord Chaitanya came and cure, cured him. So when Lord, when Lord Chaitanya embraced him, then the, the man, his whole body became healthy again and he became very, his body became very healthy, became very strong and attractive. So then Vasudev felt very bad. He thought, oh, now it will be very difficult for me to be Krishna conscious. Now I have the healthy body, I may want to enjoy sense gratification. So, Lord Chaitanya told him, so you have to always chant the holy name of Krishna and you have to preach Krishna consciousness. By doing these two activities, you, you won't be able to have any time for sense gratification. So a devotee keeps himself always busy in the service of Krishna and this protects him from maya. So Lord Nasringadev's appearance is very wonderful, very pleasing to the devotees. It helps us to overcome all the dangers in the path of our life. So Prahlad Maharaj, he doesn't, he does, he's not afraid of this form of Lord Nusringadev. Even though the Lord is, you know, he's got this very 
ferocious mouth, he's got these sh sharp eyes and he's got these long nails which can rip you to pieces. And then he's been fighting with Haranyakashipu, so he ripped out the intestines of Haranyakashipu, so he's got a lot of blood all over him. And he's making this loud sound, which is very frightening to hear that roar of the elephants, to hear the roar of the lion. It's very frightening for even the elephants. So all of these things will be very frightening to those who are not devotees. But to devotees like Prahlad, there's no fear. Devotee, we like to worship the Lord in this mood, when he's in this angry mood. We have the form Ugra Nashringa. Just like here in Mayapur, very special deity of Lord Nashringa, the Ugra Nashringa. Just at the time when he's going to kill Haranyakashipu, or he's just killed Haranyakashipu. So, one devotee, there was one devotee, she was an artist and she had to paint the pictures and she had to paint a picture of Lord Varaha. So she asked Prabhupada about it. She said, you know, Varaha is a boar. The boars are not very beautiful. I, I, she said, I don't know how I can paint him. Uh, am I supposed to make him look beautiful? So Prabhupada said, Lord is always beautiful, even when he's a boar. So you have to do your best. You're the artist. Do just try your best to make him look nice. So the Lord has all of these amazing forms. But they're, all of these different forms which the Lord appears in, they're always pleasing to the devotees. Lord Nish, worship of Lord Nishringadeva is very popular in ISKCON, but Lord Varaha, I never saw anybody worship Lord Varaha. But there are many deities, many ancient deities of Lord Varaha. There's one deity of Lord Varaha there in Mathura. 
was brought by Shatrugna when he established Shatrugna brought it when he established Mathura. And there are many also Nishringa deities in South India. Many Varaha also South India. We have to see the Lord with spiritual vision. Those who are devotees, they will see the beauty of the Lord in all of His different forms. We have the one, uh, there's one diorama exhibition and they have the form of Lord Varaha fighting Haranyaksha. You know Haranyaksha, the big demon brother of Haranyakashipu, he fought with Lord Varaha. Lord Varaha killed that Haranyaksha. So, people who are not devotees, they come and they see that form, they think Haranyaksha is a devotee and Varaha is a demon. They don't know that Varaha is actually it's a form of God. And when we tell them, this is Lord Varaha, he's the Lord, he's the good person, this other man, he's a demon, <laughs> they're surprised. So we have to we have to see the Lord through with the help of devotees to understand the different forms of the Lord and his pastimes, his Leela. Okay, we'll stop there today. Any questions? Hare Krishna. Dhanda Bhat Pranams Prabhu.
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Sorry, Maharaj, I'm putting my uh, camera off because it may disturb the connection. Uh, okay. So, I have a question. I have to confirm the question. I have to confirm the question. Hare Krishna. Okay, I have to confirm the question. I have to confirm the question. Krishna Prem, yeah, the Krishna Bhakti Prasta Gorna Kolagi Guru Ko Kripa Bani Jain Shar Poyla Poyla Janma Ko Sukriti Rayu Janma Ko Sukriti Haribol Haribol Asunya Samal Jai Bona Haji Poyla Janma Ko Sukriti Rayu Janma Ko Sukriti Pan Jain Shar Haji Haji Maataji This way man कृष्ण प्रेम कृष्ण भक्ति सही पहला जन्म को स्वीकृति अन्य यो जन्म को स्वीकृति यो जन्म को पुण्य को अन्य पहला जन्म को पुण्य ले करे रख कृष्ण भक्ति उन्हें साकिन जा तरह गुरु को स्वीकृति गुरु को कृपा आजे आजे हाँ कृष्ण भक्ति लाई से कृष्ण भक्ति लाई कृष्ण को भक्ति पाऊँ तो लाई तरह गुरु को कृपा से आह पहला जन्म को स्वीकृति पनी चाइन्स जगी आई ना गुरु लेते ये जन्म में अनायास हमें लाइक कृपा कर नोन जगी आयो महाराज क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम नंदा सुता प्रोजी ही इज आस्किंग दैट टू अटेन कृष्ण प्रेम और कृष्ण भक्ति वी नीड अ मेनी डिवोशन फ्रॉम प्रीवियस बर्थ एंड दिस बर्थ आल्सो वी नीड टू डू अ uh, devotion from previous birth and this birth also. But to uh, get mercy from uh, Guru, how much um, time period do we need? Well, you don't need any time at all. You can get mercy immediately. Immediately. Take up, the, take the shelter of the Guru, take shelter of the instructions of the Guru, you get the mercy. It doesn't take any time at all. Devotee is more merciful than Krishna. Krishna may take long time to get before you get the mercy. But devotee immediately can give the mercy. But we should not take advantage, we shouldn't cheat, we shouldn't take the mercy and then just waste it. Somebody thinks, oh the mercy of the Guru, that's always there, so I don't need to worry, I, anytime I want I can get the mercy. So then I don't need to become, I don't need to be very serious. So I, I'll just wait the end of life, then I'll get the mercy of the Guru to save me. That's not good. That's cheating. So along with mercy, there must also be sadhana. If we do very good sadhana, then we would, then we are good candidates to get the mercy of the Guru. But if we just come and ask for the Guru's mercy without doing anything, without surrendering, without practicing seriously, then it's not good. 
So you have to deserve the mercy to get the mercy of the Guru. You have to prove that you're serious, that you're sincere, that you that you really want to get the mercy of Krishna. So you cannot just get the mercy and not do anything. You have to also do the proper, follow the process. You have to follow the process, hearing and chanting. You have to be regular in your devotion. So you want the mercy, you have you have to work for it, you have to deserve it. Prove to Krishna that you're worthy of getting the mercy. Uh, when the spiritual master sees that you're very sincere, you're very dedicated, then he will give more mercy. Is it clear? Okay, thank you also for the question. No, because you're offering that tosi to Krishna. Sometimes when we do fire yagya, when we do initiation ceremony, at that time we have the fire yagya, often we will put tosi, dry tosi wood in the fire. Tosi takes her birth in the form of the plant for service to Krishna. So the wood, wood which we're not making into me, into beads, we can use like that. You can burn it. You can put it in the fire when you do initiation ceremony. 
Or you wrap cotton wool around it and you offer it at Dhamma during the Kartik month, you offer the lamps. No, of, there's no offense. Mm-hmm. Okay. Any other question there? Hare Krishna. Why we cannot 
why we cannot believe in him like that? And the, another part of this question is that uh, even though we know that we have to chant many brands, we have to do our sadhana, we have to advance in spiritual life, still why we cannot do it? We know that we have to do it, but we cannot do it. We are not, we are trapped and we, even though we want to advance, we are not advancing. What is the reason and what should we do to overcome this? Yes. The, the problem is our attachment to sense gratification. We are thinking that the spiritual path is not very important. We are thinking there is more pleasure in the path of Maya. Uh, Maya, just, uh, uh, I want to say something. Ma uh, Prabhupada was saying that even though we know that Krishna is the one and we should, uh, Krishna is the best and we should be with Krishna, even though we know that, still we are like attached to Maya. Yes, we are attached uh, to Maya. Right. So, one day, one day Krishna will put you in a situation to make life more difficult for you. Because you are very comfortable in this world, you don't take Krishna consciousness seriously. You know everything, but you don't do it. Because we're, we're thinking it's not very important. We're thinking, well, I'll, I'll do it one day, one day, just wait till I get older. But the problem is, every day you're getting older and you don't see the problem, you don't see the danger. So it's our own ignorance. Krishna, Krishna does not force any of us that we have to do service to Him. He gives all of us free will. What do you want to do? Krishna, Krishna is in the heart. And remember what Krishna says in the 15th chapter, Parmananda, you know? 15th chapter, 15th verse of Bhagavad Gita. What's Krishna doing in the heart? You cannot remember? My goodness, you've been a devotee so long, you don't remember this verse? This is terrible. You have to study Bhagavad Gita better. Krishna says, Sarvasya chahamridisani visto mataq smitir gyanam apohanam cha. From me comes knowledge, remembrance, and forgetfulness. Krishna says, 
So, Krishna arranges. If you want to remember, he can arrange. If you want to forget, Krishna can arrange. You want to forget, so Krishna is arranging for you. It's our fault. We want, we, we get what we ask for. Man proposes, God disposes. So you want to be very careful, very cautious. That's a very dangerous situation. Because time is so valuable and you're wasting the time. If you know you're going to die in seven days, you become very serious. But you're thinking, I'm young, I'm enjoying, I'm having a good time. I have my nice wife, we have a nice apartment, we're happy. You have to be very careful. Maya, Maya is covering our real knowledge. So Lord Chaitanya comes and calls out, Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, wake up, sleeping soul. You're sleeping in the lap of Maya. You have achieved this rare human birth, but you do not care for it. You spend the day decorating your body and the night sleeping. So, we have to understand the real purpose, the real value of this human life and how it's very special, very rare. And we have to see, we have to understand how this human life is every day, another day less, we're nearer to death. We're going to leave the body one day. You have to get ready. Okay, any other questions? Yes, Thank you so much, Maharaj. I'm now in fact clear. Yes. 
Well, it depends how much instruction she has from her Guru Maharaj. She should try to communicate, she can try to write some letters to him. He will be happy to hear from you. Sometimes we find, you know, people come and they take initiation and then we never see them again. They just go away and we never see them, we never hear from them, we don't know what they're doing. So there should be some kind of relationship there. You just have to make a little effort to write something and then have somebody translate it. If you don't know English, you can have somebody translate it for you. Because the initiation is the beginning, right? Initiation is the beginning. But you have to get more, you're supposed to get more knowledge, you're supposed to get more knowledge. Okay, so you took initiation from him, you, you should sometimes, you should hear from him. Of course, you can also say, well, I'm reading Prabhupada's books. Okay, that's, then that's very good. You're getting knowledge from Prabhupada. And, and you're hearing my lecture, you listen to my lecture, maybe you listen to Prabhavishnu lecture, maybe you listen to the other devotees who come and give classes here every night. So you get knowledge from them also. They're like your Shiksha Guru. Sunnu 
But the most important relationship is with Prabhupada. So if you worship Srila Prabhupada, take part in Prabhupada's Guru Puja. Next month we will celebrate in the month of Kartik, we celebrate Prabhupada's disappearance from the world. And we celebrated Prabhupada's Vyasa Puja the day after Janmashtami. So you should take part in those festivals. And you can also write an offering. You should describe your gratitude to Prabhupada. So if you do like that, then you're okay. Where did she get initiation? She got initiation in Thailand? Phuket. Maharaj, she is saying that uh, she doesn't have personal contact with Kavishandra Maharaj, but she meets you often in the festivals in yeah. Phuket. Yeah. So, okay. All right. So, like I say, if you, so long as you have contact with the devotees. When you're hearing from senior Vaishnavas, they will be your Shiksha Guru. Try to read Prabhupada's book. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hare Krishna. No, no, it's okay. These things happen. Yes? Any other question? Are you okay, Krishna? Maharaj Spurgeon is asking that um, 
when Noshimha when Lord Noshimha appeared, then at that time Brahmaji was present and Prahlad Maharaj both were present and they also are uh, included in the Mahajan. But Brahma was scared and Prahlad Maharaj was not scared. What is the reason, Maharaj? It's because Brahmaji is not having that love again, that love for Nashamadev or Lordship. What is it, Maharaj? Mm. <laughs> yes, well, Brahma, he's not the, on the level of Prahlad Maharaj, that is certain. Brahma is also a, a, a great devotee, but he's not on the level of Prahlad Maharaj. It was Prahlad Maharaj who, for the for the for the protection of Prahlad Maharaj, Lord Nasringadeva appeared. So Brahma, he was he was worshipped by Haranyakashipu, and he'd given these benedictions to Haranyakashipu. So then he saw the Lord come and kill this Haranyakashipu. So Brahma would naturally understand that, you know, maybe he'd done something very wrong in giving those benedictions to Haranyakashipu. And after, after the Lord had killed Haranyakashipu, Lord Nishengadev told Brahma, don't you give these benedictions again. Don't give these kind of benedictions again. You give me so much trouble. So, you can see a, quite a different relationship there between Prahlad and Brahma and how they relate to Lord Nishingadev. Hare Krishna. All right. So, I hope so, Maharaj. It's nearly nine also. Okay, so then we'll stop here then tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mahavas. Thank you very much, Mahavas. Hare Krishna Prabhu, Srila Prabhupada ki. Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki. Haribo.